Some of the best decks in the game. Absolutely. Two of the best free decks starting off here quite nicely. We did just have a quick look at the prizes there, and it is worth noting Xander did actually prize one Sobble, one Drizzle, and one Inteleon. But the players are off here, and we are going with round one of the World Championships 2022. It's been a long time coming, but Worlds is happening. We've finally done it, and Zach just having a quick peek at a Crabominable V. I think not something that... Uh, Xander really needs in this matchup. I think it's a little bit of a tech card for a deck we haven't mentioned yet, the Mewtwo control deck uh, with the V Union. So it's a little bit awkward that uh, Xander has started with this V Pokemon. Anzac gets to go first here, and he kicks things off with a Battle VIP pass. That's the best time to find it. It's not usable on any other turn in the game, but straight away he's able to start filling up his board. And this is exactly what Mew is looking to achieve. The wider you go with your bench, the more value you can accumulate with that Genesect V's Fusion Strike system and just draw through your deck. Because Mew, at the end of the day, is still very combo oriented. Absolutely. I mean, Battle VIP Pass is just the perfect turn one card. Get any two basic Pokemon. And of course, in a deck like Mew, you're getting Genesect. You're building up that draw engine as well. But this is an awkward part of the matchup because a Mew player really wants to fill their bench with Genesect to have that phenomenal draw power. But then again, Palkia does damage based on the amount of bench Pokemon. So you want to limit your bench so that you're not giving away extra damage. We do see a flip Ooh. for Kramer Magic. It is Tails, so no searching any card there, unfortunately. Yeah, I still think there's a couple actions here that Zachary can do. He's got the Rose Tower. We're going to see one card off of that. You always want to use this first because, just like you see, he's picked up an extra Pokemon. Now we can draw two additional cards from his first Genesect. Oh, that is very nice. Elisa Sparkle, not this turn. Turn one, you can't play a supporter, but that's a card you want to have. Did we, yeah, we did see an energy drop onto the Mew, and that's pretty much everything you could ask for if you're Zachary. You've got your two Genesect, your Mew, your Meloetta, your energy drop. You've even got your Rose Tower there. So that's a, that's a good start. Yeah, you kind of would like to cycle a few more cards, but he got the main things. He got a couple Genesect, Mew's there with energy. That's kind of the best of both worlds. And uh, we are seeing a Battle V pass from uh, Crabominable as well, um, so that we can fill up this board. Both players are choosing to play for Battle VIP pass, so they really want to have these explosive turns. We know that Palkia also likes filling its bench and going wide, so we're seeing a quick deck search from Xander, just getting comfortable knowing what Pokemon are uh, in those prize cards. Obviously, there's some key one-offs for him to keep track of. He's eyeing up the Roxanne straight away at the top of his deck. That's got to keep track of that path to the peak as well. And he's going to start now electing which basics to go for. And uh, looks like Sobble's going to be in here possibly, but no, he's going to kick things off with the Radiant Greninja. He also has a Capacious Bucket in his hand, so you can easily start getting some value from that, as well as the first attack. And wow, he has double VIP pass to start things off. That's what a great way to start the stream. That's ridiculous. One player had a battle VIP pass. That's a good start. And then Lander's like, hang on a second, just the one? <laughs> gets both of them. You've got your Radiant Greninja to do a bit of drawing, because wow. Capacious Bucket gets you two energy. And, you know, generally speaking, one goes on the Palkia, one gets discarded with Raiding Greninja to draw two cards. You've got a Sobble there ready to evolve. You've got a backup Palkia. I will say Grabominable is probably the worst starter. Right. <laughs> it's a tech card. Sure. You want it there in an emergency in the right matchup. You don't want to start with it. No, and it has that lower hit points as well. So it can be something that Zach sort of prioritizes in the late game. We're going to see the first concealed cards from Greninja, and we see straight away an Irida. This Ooh. is the backbone of the Palkia deck. You can go ahead and grab a water Pokemon as well as an item card. This really unlocks the archetype, and we could be seeing even more VIP pass coming down here. <laughs> Absolutely. There's still one bench space left, and that could be all you need. We do see the Palkia V-Star coming out ready for next turn, you know, kind of relying on the fact that Mew generally doesn't play very much hand disruption, so you can search for it now, and it, it's probably going going to be there next turn ready in your hand ready. So, I mean, this start, I mean, Zachary had a good start, but Xander's start here is just, he's even getting the second Sobble. Right, and it's not only that his bench is going wide, he's also littering that discard pile with water energy, and that really opens up the plays Palkia can make as well. It means you can threaten all sorts. You can use the Palkia V star to attack with. You can use the V possibly as well if need be. You can even threaten Radiant Greninja if you feel like it's appropriate and set up some uh, V maxes, which may stay out of range of the Palkia in one hit KO. But yeah, it's everything you want, and he's already got plays for next turn, especially against a Mew archetype, which is 
not known for playing disruption either, so you can just hold on to a very strong hand. Absolutely. Replaces the Rose Tower there with a training court, lets you get a basic energy back from your discard every turn. And it's just going to give Xander that stream of energy looking for. Now, Zachary does play a power tablet here, so that's an extra 30 damage this turn. And that Elisa Sparkle we pointed out last turn looks like it's going to get a couple of energy. Yeah, it's certainly going to yeah. be the case. He's debating whether to go for Genesect or that Meloetta. I think Meloetta is one of those cards that is so fragile, it can get KO'd pretty easily. It even unlocks the door for Xander to potentially use some of his one prize attacking threats. So instead, electing for the Genesect and also revving up that Mew, ready to rumble. He doesn't have many draws here. I think he may even be forced to play a double turbo this turn just to see what he can get off of Genesect because he's just holding on to supporters right now. Yeah, that's not ideal. You need to be emptying out your hands. You can use that Fusion Strike system to draw lots of cards and get rolling. And, you know, in a lot of matchups, you would be able to play maybe a third Genesect and a second Mew, fill up your bench, be drawing until you've got six cards in hand every turn. And, you know, that's when this Mew deck really goes into high gear, but you can't afford to do it. But you did call it, Joe, that double turbo does come down here. We draw with Genesect and we do bench a third Genesect here. Yeah, and he's holding on to a power tablet. These are very vital resources. The 280 hit points is really awkward for Mew. So he's just going to hold on to one, get a couple draws. He has found his VMAX, so he's guaranteed uh, two prizes here, and he can get one more card from a final Genesect. Yeah, setting up quite nice. You've got the two energy on the Mew, which will, of course, allow you to copy that attack on Genesect, do 210. And you've got a Genesect with two energy ready to go in the future. So this isn't looking too bad. It, it's not, it's an awkward matchup. And you're seeing, you know, things like Power Tablet being played, hoping you get that KO. You, you're putting the energy on the Genesect, where some games you want the Meloetta. But it seems to be Zachary setting up quite a nice board here. And taking those first two prizes is going to be very, very big. Also taking the time to check their own prize. I think it's always important, not just fusion energy, but also power tablets, damage modifiers, the choice belt as well. Uh, see if you have that second V Max available. Eventually, does opt to go for that final Mew. It's another great option to have to continue the pressure just in case Xander comes up with some random combination where you can heap a whole load of damage on. He wants to have another attacker. He's just going to go for the Melodious Echo from the Meloetta with three fusion energy in play. And that's enough thanks to the power tablet and he's going to kick off with two prize cards. A pretty good start for him. Yeah, not too bad at all. Has chosen to fill up the bench there and just gone, you know what, I'm going to do what Mew does. And I think if you take the first two prizes and get off on the good foot, that gives you that confidence. You don't mind giving Palkia a little extra damage because actually you take the first two prizes, you've got the good setup. And sometimes when you've got two aggressive decks, taking the first prize, you never kind of look back and that's all you need. And we see, speaking of all you need, Irida for the second turn in a row. No surprise there. That really is the backbone, and it means he can continue to grab more Drizzle if need be, and continue to filter more item cards. Oftentimes, buckets are important, but we're seeing the Cross Switcher come straight to Xander's hand. And this is one way you can try and race a Mew. You can completely ignore the Mew itself and just try and take two prizes on the Genesect over and over again. Absolutely. It's hard to KO a Mew Max for Palkia. It's not anywhere near as difficult to KO a Genesect. Plus, you then get the extra bonus of, well, now there's fewer Genesects, so you're drawing fewer cards. That's going to make things a lot more awkward in the late game. Of course, it is worth noting Xander does play a single copy of Path to the Peak, which can be devastating for the Mew decks. But there is a Pump Kaboo in the Mew list here, <laughs> which can counter that. So that is a back and forth, which could end up coming into play later on in the game. We're going to see the concealed cards from Raiding Greninja once again, double evolving up into those V-Stars. It's so important for Xander to try and keep these guys bulky, keep them out of range of easy gusting from the Mew player. I'm going to see that second Shady dealing from Drizzile to cherry pick some more cards here. I end up Hisui in Heavy Ball. Yeah, could get some nice little Pokemon out. We did also see train. I'm not saying little Pokemon, it's Heavy Ball, some nice big Pokemon <laughs> out. But we did see Training Court getting an energy bat. There is a lovely little combo with Training Court and Greninja, right. where Radiant Greninja essentially just turns into draw two cards, which on a basic Pokemon is absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> so what's he getting off the Heavy Ball, Joe? Well, he's going to scout his prize cards and see what he wants here. Uh, I haven't quite taken a peek yet, so we'll get to see. Well, we got one of each of the Inteleon line in there. So it's a Sobble, Drizzle, Inteleon. So you've got to be going for one of those, you think? Yeah, got to be the Sobble, the yeah. uh, only basic. So he can fill up his board now. The Palkia is maxing out at 260 damage with two full benches. 
and you can also increase that if need be with Choice Belt. But thanks to the uh, cross switches, I imagine he's just targeting the Energy Genesect here. Yeah. Exactly what we're going to see. A turn attachment means Xander doesn't even need to commit his V-Star power this turn, which is another fantastic thing to hold on to. And he can just take a two price swing, evening up that prize trade. Yeah, I mean, Xander's had two turns here, and both of these turns have gone exactly as Xander would want them to. Not missed an energy drop, had Irida both turns, taken two prizes, got two Palkia out. You've got the Sobble line, you know, you've got a Sobble, you've got Sobble and two Drizzle down there, you've got your Radiant Greninja. And yeah, I mean, now the question is at any point, do you have to go through that Mu V Max, or is that can Xander just play around it for the whole game? It's one of those things you sort of commit to whilst you have the option. <laughs> um, because even though there is the likes of uh, quick shooting, thanks to the fusion energy, the Mew is protected from those sorts of abilities. Um, so it is just a little bit too chunky right now. So Xander's going to continue to try and get around it while he can. Uh, Zachary here, he's got his first power tablet. He's going to establish another Genesect, and he's going to start drawing cards. This is the aim of the deck. Dig deep. We're going to have to see some more damage modifiers. Choice spell is great, and also a Kramomatic. Yeah, Kramomatic can be absolutely fantastic. Can get you any cards you want if you feel lucky enough. We see a Trekking Shoes being played instead. Looks like it's an escape rope hitting the discard pile. We see one additional card. I believe it's a VIP pass. That's not what you want. I was an, oh, it's an horn. echoing horn. So that makes his hand a little bit awkward. We see a turn attachment of fusion energy. I think you want to use another Genesect here because all of these resources are important. You never want to cram away a cram because you'd love to have two bites of the cherry. Oh, we did draw a VIP pass there, though, which is fantastic to use as fodder for something like a Cramomatic. Because at this stage of the game, it's not doing you any good. And that's exactly what we see. Cramomatic discarding about a VIP pass. It's a Tails. Ooh. That's. Over two on Kramomatic for Zachary. That is not what you're looking for at all. They're just shuffling up because there was a fail search of a quick ball as well. And now we're going to see one final Fusion Strike system trying to draw all the way up to six. And hopefully it means he can hold on to his Echoing Horn because it's a great way for him to close out that game. But we still need one damage mod here. Yeah, we do. We're not quite there. Echoing Horn gets one of your opponent's Pokemon out there, discard onto their bench. So it's a great way to Ooh. bring back a Pokemon. What did we get, Joe? Oh, we you saw Power tablet. tablet. That's huge. So there comes a Mew Max coming down there onto the active. This is an interesting choice of whether to cram a Matic or not, because it's a great thing to get VIP pass out of the hand, because you are going to get into Roxanne range, but it's also great to draw back into the cram. So <laughs> he's going to hold on right now by the looks of things, certainly debating. You could go ahead and try and get your other choice belt. It's happening. He's playing it. Do we get the heads? Finally! We don't! Oh, it's man. another tail. That is not going well on cram a Matic. Over oh, free. <laughs> it's not what you want round one of worlds. <laughs> But we do get a KO on Palkia V-Star, which very much is what you want. So it's, it's not all bad. Yeah, down to just two prize cards remaining, already clutching the Echoing Horn. Very scary times for Xander. You have to think this is a great window of opportunity for him to look to use that Path to the Peak Roxanne combo. Absolutely. you unfortunately not going to be gusting because there's only one boss's orders and that can't be played with another supporter. We know one of the cross switcher is in the prizes and two have been played. So there's not going to be any gusting here, but I think you're right. Path to the peak combined with Roxanne, put your opponent down to a low hand size, turn off that fusion strike system ability and then hope you can get a two hit KO on the Mew, one more KO, which could you know just be that little Meloetta. Yeah. And then that's the game. I think that's got to be the play. Yeah, I think that's fully the strategy. You can use your Radiant Greninja to attack this turn. You can set up the 90 on the active whilst knocking out the Meloetta. And then you keep your two prizer out of the range of fire as well to force Gust as well from Zachary. So I feel like that's certainly a strategy here. We did see a lovely little play there where Xander used Scoop Up Net to pick up the Radiant Greninja so he could play it and get a second use out of that, drawing <laughs> extra cards. That was a lovely little play there. We do see the Drizzle coming down going to be able to search for a trainer card and the question is what Xander got in hand I was going straight for the rock sand there was no hesitation at all so yeah I, I think this is absolutely the play we know they're not prized of course there's only one path to the peak there's only one rock sand but they're both in the deck so we see the energy we see the rock sand coming down so I don't think he was able to cherry pick a path. So he's really hoping off the six cards he can find that because Roxanne, not very effective when there's three Genesect in play ready to top <laughs> him back up. Uh, so he's really hoping this six can help him out. Absolutely. I'm fairly sure there's a Drizzle that can evolve this turn. 
I'm pretty sure one was netted and just rebent, so I'm not sure oh. if he actually has them available to him. And he prized his Inteleon as well. He just yes. plays one copy of Sword and Shield Inteleon. So we just have to raw find this part of the peak. That's not perfect. I think I saw it. Did I see it? Am I seeing things? Oh, it's oh. very hard to tell. Didn't seem to get it. We do see the V-Star power. That is going to power up Greninja. And this is actually really big because it means Zachary is going to have to gust in order to win the game next turn. Yep, as well as finding some extra damage modifiers because Xander has fortunately denied an Echoing Horn by going completely wide on his board. And we're going to see 90 onto the active, as well as that one prize being taken out. You can see where Xander's map is now. Finish off this VMAX, and uh, you can be sitting pretty. Whereas Zachary, he might have to get a little bit more creative now if he's not able to draw what he needs from these Genesects. You've got to think if Xander had found the path to the peak, this game would be as good as over, unless Zachary happened to have the pumpkin boot right now. As it stands, this is, this is looking really good for Xander. Zachary, it's not over, but... We need some gusting, potentially, some damage modifiers. It's, it's getting very late in the game. We do see a Mew being searched out here. Yeah, I think his best play here is to Psychic Leap into the Palkir and set it up. And then yeah. you uh, essentially remove your damaged VMAX from play. And now that you've established a second Mew V, you can do this fairly comfortably. I'm going to see, I think, four cards here. And we see Pokemon Catchers. That's definitely an element of Zachary's 60. He plays two bosses orders and three Pokemon Catchers. Yeah, so here he's it certainly going to need some head splits here. He's missed on all of his Kramomatics. Let's see if the Catcher can be any better. No! Man, he is having a rough time of things right now. Cannot flip heads! <laughs> I mean, you live and die by the coin flip sometimes with this Mew VMAX deck. You accept that you have some huge high roll potential, but on those tail flips, it feels much weaker here. And now there's a real debate for Zachary. There really is. I mean, you're right. The Psychic Leap is great. You copy the Mew V on the bench and not a, you don't do a huge amount. It's like 70 damage, but you get the Mew V Max off the board. You right. heal that damage. There's a Mew ready to evolve next turn, and that makes things awkward for Xander to take those last three prizes. But you've really wanted to use the Pokemon Catcher to bring the Palkia V-Star up in order to do that. You can do it into a Radiant Greninja, but if you're not even KOing, if you're not getting a one-hit KO on a single prize Pokemon, that's not what this deck's going for. We're seeing a quick fail search of Ultra Ball and uh, four final cards on this last Genesect. Are we going to see any gusting options here? Another Pokemon catcher. Now, this one really has to be heads. It's got to be heads at this point, <laughs> which is a terrible thing for us to say. Are we jinxing it? Oh, my goodness. This we is did. unbelievable. <laughs> this I think is we did. You did. So unfortunate for Zachary because he really needs that damage on the Palkia here. Oh. Uh, just doing 70 into the Greninja doesn't help you at all. Uh, you need that because you've spent so many damage modifiers on the earlier two prize Pokemon. So his map is just awkward now. It really is. I mean, it helps you a little bit because you are healing off the damage, but you're not getting any closer to actually winning the game. You're not taking those prizes. And like you say, you can KO a Palkia if you've got the damage modifiers, but that's not what's happening. And we do just... Is that just a KO? It's bold. <laughs> I don't think I'm that's... I'm not sure. Ideal. We just see the attachment. Yeah, and then, yeah, go. Xander takes game one. The training court was in play, so the energy was never going to be an issue. And I think that's Zachary just saying, I missed too many flips. I'm not going to win game one. Yeah, and the Zigzagoon coming down didn't really matter at all. There was plenty of damage for that Palkia. <laughs> Two full benches and that choice belt, allowing the origin form Palkia V-Star to deal 290. The 90 damage prepped up by the Radiant Ninja. Well thought out by Xander. He didn't quite get the path of the peak, but he still had a very robust board, was very cautious, got that Manaphy down. It's one of those cards where you think, I don't need it for this matchup, but yes, you do. Echoing Horn is always a secret threat, and he played around it very well there. Now, that was an excellent play, and it's one of these things, I'm not a big fan of blaming losses on luck. Most <laughs> of the time, when you think you've been unlucky and lost, there's something in the way you played, something in the way you built your deck, there's something that you could have done to increase your chances. But I have to say, in this particular game, going 0 for 3 on Kramomatic and 0 for 2 on Pokemon <laughs> Catcher, that was huge in this game. You can take a couple of, of tail slips. You know you're going to get a couple of tail slips when you play a flippy deck. But that heads on Catcher would have been so huge. And it's, you've got to think that, you know, Zachary passed knowing that the game was basically over. And you've got to think that was a tails on Pokemon Catcher. Yeah, and he had two dips at it in the same turn, and it just failed him, unfortunately. It really does allow you to power spike some turn ones, especially when you go second, so you can see why the Pokemon catchers are such a popular choice. And Kramomatic is huge for a combo-centric deck, essentially, when you play so many item cards. It's essentially always live, and it can be so flexible. You can see why the cards are in the deck, um, but you really have to just write that one off.
And it's not how you want to start your first game of the day, but it's what he's got to deal with. And at least he knows now that with a bit more luck on his side, because he got very close in that first game, he can have a better time of things. Absolutely. There is a bit of confidence to be gained there. When you're looking and going, hang on a second. Yes, I lost game one, but with a flip or two, things could have gone differently. Speaking of flips, it's a... Yeah, it's, of course it's a Tails. I was going to say it's a whole new game, <laughs> but no, not quite. We're doing the same thing over again. It's the rerun. Oh. Still have a quick fall, at least. So there's a couple of actions here. I think it's just painful discards at his disposal now when he's not able to VIP straight away. All these resources may have to go. Because you know that Kramomatic was going for a VIP pass straight to get away. those two basics. So now instead you've got to lose a Lisa Sparkle, which is a great card in the first couple of turns, just to get yourself a single basic out. And you know, Zachary's first turn last game was absolutely phenomenal. It worked beautifully. That's not the way it's going this time. No, he's going to eye up a Mew V, get in on the bench, have a look through his deck. Still got to be diligent, still got to check those prize cards, and he is keeping track of those well. It can really inform some future discards as well for Kramomatics and even uh, ball search cards. We saw very often Zachary choosing to use those ball search cards, taking no target because his board was already full, just to lower that hand size. And that's really the name of the game. You've got to go up to go down sometimes. <laughs> and uh, Zachary has a pretty slow start here. One draw from Genesect. Playing the power tablet. Not, it's not going to be attacking. It's turn one can't attack. Literally just playing it to draw oh, an extra man. card. It's a real shame for him. Xander. It's a rough turn one. Now gets his first turn. We see at least a couple quick balls his end. I'm not sure if there's any supporter there uh, peeking out. Oh, there there's is an, an Irida. Irida. So he's really going to kick things off well here. And I mean, consistency in the last game, Xander's deck ran. The combination of Irida and you've got that lovely Inteleon engine, which a lot of the time is really more of a Drizzile engine. And it just ran beautifully in that last game. Xander pretty much had everything he needed every turn. And starting off with an Irida here in, in game two is very, very nice. So, I mean, you get yourself a water Pokemon and an item card, but. I mean, depending on the hand, you just go and get a battle VIP pass in. None of that flipping malarkey, just go and get it. I think the only thing he's lacking right now is energy. So he may be tempted to go for a Radiant Greninja plus a uh, Capacious Bucket play. I think that's a good shout. That's also uh, an alternate line. You can yeah. continue to draw cards as well with that Radiant Greninja and just see more cards in the deck. Uh, and you can already see the Ooh. VIP pass and the bucket being spied here. Let's see how Xander wants to navigate it because there's always that huge intention to go for the VIP pass because they get so much worse when you don't play them. They just sit around and deck the entire time. They can really clunk up the list. So he is going to go ahead yeah. and grab VIP as well as Radiant Greninja and just go as wide as possible here. It's an interesting decision because, like you pointed out, there are two quick balls in Xander's hand. So here the basics go. aren't going to be a huge issue. However, oh, no. We're back to the bucket. We're back to the bucket. <laughs> as I'm explaining why VIP pass was the one he chose. No, it turns out the bucket. And it is an awkward choice because on the one hand, you can basically fill up your bench and that includes Sobble to evolve to get your item cards or trainer cards. But on the other hand, like you say, getting that energy drop turn one is huge. Getting the energy to draw cards of Radiant Greninja, which could be about VIP pass. Let's see what it is. Couple cards from Concealed. And it's parts of the Inteleon engine, not fantastic. Maybe some awkward discards from the Quick Balls that he has access to here. Going to get rid of Echoing Horn. Fortunately, not a matchup where you necessarily need it too much because there are always Genesects waiting around for you to deal with. Gets the first Palkia developed. And even though there wasn't much happening from the Mew, it's still a dangerous deck. It doesn't take much for, uh, you know, a boss's orders to come out, an escape rope even, uh, just evolving up and using double turbo. Like, you still have so much reach in the Mew deck, you may still have to be respectful here. I don't mind hedging and just getting one Palkia down, but you can get punished if the opponent just rips a Genesect off the top and starts motoring through. So Xander playing things safe and just getting double Palkia here and passing it over by the looks of things. Hey, you don't want to end turn one without Sobble, but you're absolutely right. It, Mew is essentially a single energy attacker with double turbo energy. You can get a turn one KO, so I think you're absolutely right. You've got to get the double Palkia because that's the worst case scenario, and it is a realistic scenario. So Xander passes over there. He doesn't unfortunately get the Sobble out, but there's still quite a lot of good stuff on the board. So you're going to get that energy drop onto the Palkia. I, oh, no, didn't get an energy drop down. Uh, no, chose to uh, hold it in hand just for more cards for Greninja next turn. You can always just commit your V-Star power in the next turn or use Melanie either way. And unfortunately, it's a fusion energy and a lesser sparkle that has to be fodder here for an Ultra Ball. Oh, the no. second Genesect. They're all vital cards for Mew, but Zachary has no choice. And I'm fairly sure it's the second Elisa Sparkle we've actually seen right. in the discard and not one has been played yet. So 
Zachary is on the ropes here already. One game down. We see a battle VIP pass, which is not what you're looking for. We got trekking shoes. Oh, God, Ooh. this card's a pump, Kaboo. That's huge. You can tell when his back's against the corner because these are all great cards to hold into the late game phases. And we can see instead a quick ball getting rid of the VIP pass and yet another Genesect is likely going to come onto the board here. We do see the double turbo energy. We're going to need to see some switching outs here to move the Genesect V if you want to attack this turn. He is going to proactively use Boss's orders so he can get a fresh uh, five cards here from his third Fusion Strike system. Really looking to get that VMAX, looking to get a switch out as well now. Already has the choice about established, so could still be taking the first two prizes. Like we said, it doesn't take much for the uh, new player to still get there. And Xander's conventional wisdom by getting a second Palkia is looking very intelligent right now. Very intelligent. And, I, you know, if you look at your average Mew deck, they play one Pumpkaboo and no recovery. And that's what I'm seeing, unless I'm being silly right. here on Zachary's list. Yeah. So if I'm Xander, I'm thinking path to the peak, path to the peak, <laughs> path to the peak. Because you think it's going to stick the whole game, even though it's a singlet. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, looks like it's going to be down to one Kramomatic once again. <laughs> I mean, Zachary's getting rid of another fusion energy here. We're over six so far. Could seventh time the charm? <laughs> We're looking for a switch out from Kramomatic here. Obviously, got to get that heads first. Changing the dice. Let's see if it changes his fate. It, it does. does. <laughs> Celebrating the heads. And it means that Zachary is going to take two prizes here. Picks up the switch, showing it to Xander straight away. Pretty obvious what he was going to look for here. Oh, yes. And finally, we see a bit of better body language, nodding along, finally getting things go his way. He's had some painful discards, but at least he's up in tempo. Absolutely. Taking that first couple of prizes off the Palkia is absolutely huge. And th this is what we said about Mew. Mew is just... You, you evolve once, you attach a single energy card, and then you're doing enough damage to one-hit KO a Pokemon V. It's, it's a very scary deck, especially when you add in the Fusion Strike system. So getting those parts of the puzzle are not as difficult as they might be in some other decks. And actually, that's at least a Sparkle Prize, so that means that there's only <laughs> one in the deck for Zachary. That could be relevant. We're going to see Capacious Bucket from Xander. He has no Inteleons, Drizzles, or Sobbles in sight. This is usually the backbone of his archetype. I think he's relying simply on Radiant Greninja draws here to actually get anything going. I'm not sure if he already has access to that V-Star in hand. He does have quite a large hand size. Going to go deeper here for two more cards. Finally picks up the Sobble and the V-Star. I think that's actually huge for him. Yeah, absolutely. So he can get the attack off now. So he can respond here. I'm not sure if he has any gusting available to him, so he may be settling for just hitting into this Mew as he did last game. Only has two energy to attach as well, so can't even start setting up that Radiant Greninja. We saw how well he played in that first game to set it up first and then knock it out with the Palkia. That combination, the one-two punch onto the VMAXs can be so useful. But yeah, not ideal for him. Instead, is going to attach to a Sobble here for, for later turns. Doesn't have any backup Palkia either. It's going to have to settle for um, the Subspace Swell for a chunk of damage. It's not a bad chunk of damage. It is awkward, though, because generally, Star Portal is a great way to build up Greninja. And if you don't Star Portal, you generally don't attack with Greninja. And we see Xander attacking to the, attaching to the Sobble. Right. And that's kind of like giving up on that Greninja already. Yeah. But didn't get the path to the peak, so Zachary is off here. We do see a power tablet, which I think is going to come down. He's just doing the math in his head, working through the numbers. Can I get... Because if he can get a one-hit KO on the Palkia, that's... It's not quite the end of the game, but it, it will feel like it's as good as. Oh, it's massive. Absolutely. We're going to have to see some switching cards as well. Don't forget, because there was a Techno Blast on the yep. previous turn. Also going to have to throw away a Choice Belt. No, oh, second heads in a row. That's the dice for him. <laughs> I don't, don't, don't know why he picked the blue one this whole time. No, don't go for the blue one. <laughs> Anyone watching, take note. Uh, always use your opponent's dice instead. They seem to work a little bit better. We are going to see the Kramomatic immediately for the switch, identified well by Zachary. You can freely retreat with your Mew, then switch straight back into it to reset a Techno Blast option. And then we're just going to need one damage modifier and a lot of draws to get there. Zachary as well will be eyeing up a means of getting another Mew down as well, because there's a heavily damaged one. But Xander doesn't play Rare Candy, so there's no immediate Inteleon response attack option. In fact, taking a KO on this Palkia just removes all threats from Xander's board for an entire turn. Yeah, and you're up four prizes to zero at that stage. <laughs> if I'm Xandu, obviously we know you don't want to draw. The day one, you've get two losses or fewer, draws can be devastating. If I'm Xander and this Palkia goes down, I scoop to go to game three, because a draw round one in day one, when you've got to have such a good record to go through, there I think that's go. essentially it. Now we see the Mew coming down. We don't have the damage modifier yet. No. 
we've got a couple of Genesex to help us get there. Echoing horn, double turbo energy, quick ball. Oh quick ball can God. at least empty the yeah. hand a bit for some more Genesex draws. Yeah, his Rose Tower really wasn't too helpful. <laughs> it was just another Rose Tower <laughs> and just another unplayable. You can see the shuffling of the deck for a failed search here with a quick ball. Yeah. One final Genesex. Can we see a dam another damage modifier? We know early on he already got rid of one of his power tablets, so it's a pretty difficult thing to try and cherry pick here. But if he can, it's a huge swing in the game. And it's very different. Xander is cherry picking with those Drizzle and those Intellions, but Zachary is basically just going, Genesec draws a lot of cards, I'll probably draw what I need. <laughs> and that's basically how the deck works, unless you've got Kram and Matic, of course, but Ooh. we've seen how that's worked out, and I don't think we've uh, got it. No. There's a huge sigh of relief for Xander there, because I'm, I'm, I'm sure Xander would have conceded awesome. at that point. Possibly, especially when you're very conscious of the clock. Uh, no supporter played, of course, so it looks like the backup option is just take a prize, take the Sobble out of play, limit Xander's options for draw, and it is going to be a KO with the Mew here. Psychic Leaping, actually. Yeah, good. Love it. Absolutely love it. Take the damage off the board, make that attack from Xander, because we've seen it's a two-hit KO game onto the free prize Mew. So take that two-hit KO off the board, and, you know, I mean, I know you put the Meloetta up, and at this stage, you're basically saying, fine, go on, KO the Meloetta. But you're also saying, you know what, I've taken three prizes. I like my setup. Go and have the prize. And also, if you're Zachary, you've got to be thinking, I cannot get pathed. And if Xander got a Drizzle, that would be the path, and that would potentially just shut down Zachary's deck. So I think you've kind of got to go after those Sobble to stop the path coming down. Xander has a really interesting choice. Um, he could try and Melanie here and find a second cross switcher. And if he's able to do that, he can knock out the only Mew in play. So, oh, yeah. here we go. Here we go. This is a big three cards here. Doesn't find, unfortunately, that second cross switcher. It would have been huge. Zachary taking a big risk with a Psychic Leap and just hoping that no Sobbles means they Xander can't piece together a Gusting here. And it's turned out pretty well for him. See the turn attachment onto a bench Palkia. It's going to be a pass straight back from Xander. I don't mind this play. Essentially, what you're saying is, I'm just going after your two prizes. It's going to be too hard to KO a Mew. KOing a Meloetta is only good to build up that fourth prize after KOing a Mew. I'd rather just set up my field and not give you a chance to take a two prize KO, or at least force you into having gusting in order to do so. Oh, speaking of which, we see an escape rope. Oh, what does Xander do here? I mean, you, you can put the Greninja up, but that's quite a useful draw engine. But then do you want to give up a potential two-prize attacker here? Xander's eyeing up the amount of damage modifiers used, and I think he feels safe enough that he can yeah. send up this V-Star and potentially retreat it even next turn. Uh, so it's still pretty reasonable for him to tank a hit. We're going to see another Mew come down. Uh, there's double turbo that needs to be committed, and I think Zachary probably has to commit this to the active position, eyeing up how many fusion energy he's been through. Let's see if that's the right play. We're going to see a sparkle, just going to target the active position as well as the bench. Both these Mews here. Uh, so now it means he can fusion the active and double turbo the benched Mew pretty nicely. Fins his hand well for more fusion strike systems here. Yeah, I like this. Make sure you're drawing more cards in the future is always a very nice plan indeed. I mean, at this stage, yeah, I mean, using that, uh, the power tablet last turn and not getting a KO is, is really bad because it just means that you're not, although not getting the right KO at least, it, it means you're not getting the use out of it, but then in future turns you really need it. Right. And then it's not there anymore. And it's not just that you're not using it well, it's that you don't have it for the future. And another heads! Looks like it's a game of two halves by the theme I've looked at things. Game one, it wasn't happening to, at all for him, but now changing up the dice has really changed his fortunes. And now we're going to see a Kramamatic for more coin flips. And you go straight for that dice that keeps going heads. Oh, it's run out. Betrayal. Betrayal. Just when we thought we knew what was going on, the script <laughs> changes on us again. But it looks like we're going to have a two prize KO on this Palkia here, which is going to leave one prize remaining with a Manaphy and a Radiant Greninja there that are very easy KOs with a little bit of gusting. So, I mean, this is what Mew does. Oh, we actually do have that last power tab. Is it the last one? I believe it might be, yeah. Last or penultimate power tablet. <laughs> Either way, it's there, and that's what's important. So it looks like we're going to have a pretty easy KO onto the Palkia here. And yeah. that's going to put Zachary right on the edge of, of well, even in this up at one game apiece. Then, but this uh, is the point where the clock here. starts to okay. become interesting. It certainly does. And it means that Zachary, you know, he's set up a really nice map for himself. Yeah, so you can just take out a one prize Pokemon later. 
going down to one prize remaining. The prize lead is certainly in his favor. It's really a make or break situation for Xander. Can he try and rock Sand path? Because that's the only way he can sort of slow this roll at this point. Yeah, absolutely. And I can't help but think if Xander had been able to find that path earlier in the game, as soon as you see that pump kaboo go down, you've got to think your opponent doesn't really have much of a counter. So, I don't know. Maybe there was a, there was a second Rose Tower, but then that's so hard <laughs> to just find that single stadium right. <laughs> card. So, either way, it's all a moot point. Now, that's all in the past. We see Xander drawing two cards with Greninja. And the boss is all his choice belt. I don't think these are his supporters of choice, but you can certainly slap the tool on, try and reduce your hand size uh, before using a Roxanne. Unless he's debating some other sneaky play here, it feels like you have to do some hand disruption at this point. It's a bit of a lucky dip to see if you can actually hit path, but instead can go for Irida. So allowing Zachary to just have the options instead. I think the other alternative is to go as wide as possible on the board with one prize Pokemon. So there is no Echoing Horn combo. And you can say that you can survive an attack with not enough damage modifiers remaining for Zachary with your two prizer in the active position. Quite possibly, that might have to be the play. I mean, if Zachary's got a Gusting next turn, then it's when you wouldn't need a switching card as well. Yeah. Not, it's not a huge amount needed, not without Roxanne yeah, coming right. down, not without Path coming down. It's, it's like I say, Gusting and a switch, and Zachary's got it. Yeah. And we know that Zachary's Gusting involves coin flips sometimes. <laughs> so oh, no. <laughs> it's not always as easy as it seems. Even seeing the uh, Crabominable V coming in and just a subspace swell from the Origin Form Palkia here. Let's see if Zachary has the means of getting that final attack off here. Pokemon catcher straight away. Oh, what's it going to be? What's it going to be? It's going to be... Uh, it's a head! Yes. So there we get the single prize Pokemon. Not able to attack... Well, v there we go. The VMAX yep. means you don't need a switch. Mew VMAX comes active, gets the KO. Zachary evens it up at one game each. And we're going to a game three with about 13 minutes remaining. So players going to have to get a bit of a shift on. It's tight for sure, but we've seen that they... Both players can win quickly. It can be a real uh, slugfest, as we mentioned at the start of this series. Uh, for Xander this game, he just wasn't able to piece together those Sobble. You can see the perks of VIP Pass in that first game and the downsides in the second, where he just wasn't able to see any in his opening hand, even after using that Radiant Greninja. Simply having no water energy made him go for a different line from Irida. A little bit awkward for him. Uh, Zachary identifying the one Sobble that was put down onto the board early, taking that prize uh, away and that option away from Xander was huge, as it turned out, because Xander was really left scrambling uh, in that mid-game. Absolutely, and it's a really interesting matchup because Zachary's got to be thinking, yeah, you, I only lost game one because all the coin flips went my way. <laughs> and Xander's going to be thinking, look, when I set up in game one, I, I went really well, but, you know, game two, that opening was, was really, really bad. I didn't get the opening turns I wanted. So, you know what? I, I don't know if that's, you know, so they're both thinking I can win this game. And sneakily, Zachary 6 0 last game. Xander didn't take a prize. <laughs> Yeah, it, it seemed closer because of the board state, but yeah, it certainly was an effective race from Zachary. He knows exactly where to take those prize cards. Xander with a mulligan here, no basic Pokemon usable, so he's going to have to reveal it to the opponent and uh, shuffle it up and get a fresh seven cards here. A little bit frustrating because he had the Path of the Peak very early as well oh. as a VIP pass, so you have to try and shuffle that in and refine those sorts of cards. The Path of the Peak, there's a couple of windows of opportunity to use it in this list. There's a Marnie, there's a Roxanne, both of these cards are great to combine with the Path to the Peak, but also just finding it early can also be very disruptive. Yeah, if you get it done early enough, your opponent has to find a replacement stadium or a Pump Kaboo, or they just aren't getting out of it. In terms of prizes, Zachary's got an Elisa Sparkle, a Double Turbo, one of the two Mew V yeah. Max. This is something I was saying about before we went on the air today. Two Mew V Max is great if one of them isn't prized. Ah, yes. <laughs> now, Xander still does go for a 2 2 2 prize map in very many occasions. Yeah. Uh, sometimes trying to weave in the two 90 damage hits onto a VMAX, set it up for a KO, but you know that there's always a the chance to leap with the Mew. So you never really feel that confident using uh, or putting prep damage onto a Mew because you know it can vanish out of thin air. And we know that Zachary has identified that as a play. He's used it in that second game very effectively. And Xander here, he's able to level ball to start things off. I'm not sure how many other actions he has. Yeah, he simply benches another Sobble and passes. That's and not Zachary's good. Zachary's off to the races here. Yeah, I mean, Xander may not have had a, a huge start there, but Zachary really seems like he's going to. We've got a Mew, we've got a Meloetta, we've got a Genesect, we've got an Ultra Ball being eyed up here to potentially get another card. No, what we've got instead is a quick ball, I want to say. Yep. Getting rid of that single boss's order. So boss's orders is off the table now. 
No, there no, are he, two. He does no, there two are a second one. Okay. Yeah. So that is still potentially available, just far more awkward. We get another Genesect. And whereas we saw in game one, it was a little bit cagey. I'm not going to film a bench up quite yet. Oh, go on then. <laughs> There's none of that here. Zachary is going right. Zander's had a bad start. We're short on time. They know they're in game three. These are experienced players. They know they got to play fast. And Zachary's going, I am just going to race you here. Yeah, and we see the first attachment of Fusion Strike Energy. We're looking for a lesser sparkle, of course, so he can actually launch and attack the turn. A Psychic Leap will be plenty to deal with the low hit point Sobbles. And looks like still clutching onto the Ultra Ball as an option. Going to fire off one more Quick Ball here. You can get that third Genesect V down onto the board. Give yourself as many draws as possible here. We're looking for the Sparkles themselves, but also Kramomatic gives you a backdoor option if you can flip that head. Absolutely. And at this stage, we know, we know what Zachary's going for. Mew, backup Mew. Meloetra is a single prize attacker. Free Genesect for draw. That is what the bench is going to look like. It's what we've gone for all three games at this stage. And Zachary has got to be thinking, you know, after that game one, everything went wrong. 6-0 in game two. And now he's staring down his opponent with two Sobble on the board and just absolutely going for it. So now you're drawing until you've got six cards in hand, which is absolutely huge. But Ooh, doing boy. that three times, what are we? Kramomatic's in the mix. Oh, oh we got the crab. <laughs> Still got some trekking shoes to try and hit the actual target you want to. Another Kramomatic. And he's going to take it. Gives himself two coin flips to try and hit this Alessa Sparkle. And a lesser sparkle would be so huge it's here. It's heads. Wow, that's going to be a fantastic start for Zachary here. Can initiate that prize race, remove a Sobble, and again, limit Xander's options. And you know that nothing's coming back your way. That's the most yeah. important thing here. You can freely just take the prize, and there's going to be no response at all. And at the same time, you're getting a lot of Fusion Strike energy in play, and that can really allow you to have a massive Mel uh, Melodious Echo on, previous ter or on future turns, I should say, as well. Yeah, absolutely. I love this. You've got free energy on the board. You've got the KO on the Sobble. You've got your, your two Mew coming out. You've basically got your perfect setup in terms of Pokemon. Free energy on the board, turn one. And then Xander's going to be going into turn two. One prize down with a Sobble on the board or nothing else. And, you know, there, there is no comeback here. The best Xander can hope for is setting up the board to come back in future turns. Irida off the top. I think that really bails out Xander because his hand was... Awful. <laughs> really had nothing. I'm going to see a capacious bucket, I think, here. There is a quick ball, I believe. Um, but the time has passed for VIP pass, unfortunately. So it may just have to be uh, a physical copy of uh, the Palkia here. Whilst you get some extra energy in the mix, you can also grab a Radiant Greninja potentially as well. It's just a difficult hand for him. Not what you're looking for. Battle VIP pass, of course, only usable on your first turn. It's a phenomenal card, but it's got that huge downside. So players generally play four of them in these decks where you need to get your basics out. And the hope is, you're not going to find all four of them, but you don't need it. Find one or two turn one, that will be enough. But when you end up at turn two, like you say, it's too late here. So we've got Capacious Bucket getting a couple of energy, which is nice. But it's not like the setup we're used to. You want that Radiant Greninja to discard one of those energy, and then draw a couple of cards. We do see a Drizzile, though, so at least Xander does have access to a trainer card of his choice. Yeah, you've got to imagine it's more ball search coming out because you have yeah. to try and get some extra cards from Greninja. Or you just say, well, I'm kind of living off the top deck, but I can at least get two Palkia established so I can guarantee one on the following turn because we know that Mew is very capable of gusting. Absolutely, and we saw that in the previous game where Xander did go for that second Palkia and it ended up being absolutely the right play because had he only gone for one, Zachary would have got the only one. Didn't change the result of the game, but it was still a very heads-up play at the time. But when you do that and it works as well as it did for Xander, you've got to be very conscious of that in the future going, right, well, I bail myself out once doing this. This needs to be the play moving forward. But, you know, we're down to, what, six and a half minutes left here and Xander is on the back foot. Zachary should have enough time to finish this out if he can carry on the game as he started. Yeah, Xander really mulling over his options. It's going to throw away one of his V-Star. Definitely agree with that choice. And you have to imagine there's going to be a Radiant Greninja coming in. And we're going to see a concealed cards because he needs a lot off of these two here. Yeah, absolutely. You've got to just... The problem is you get into that stage where you need so much. You need energy. You need, you know, something to get you going next turn. You want Sobble to try and evolve next turn. I mean, potentially even some kind of disruption to try and halt right. Zach's start a little bit. The path of the peak is in hand, but I feel like if you're this far behind, you need a big pole vault back to get yourself ahead. So you might have to save it for a Roxanne play. Yeah, oh, absolutely, you know, like, or even something like a Marnie. It needs to be combined with that at this stage, yeah. Oh, I'm down with that. 
Lander was looking for some fodder, I think. At least one card being awkward, but there were two very good cards that he got, <laughs> oh, no. got from the concealed cards. So again, more awkward choices. Going to choose to get rid of a Melanie here. You're going to see the second Palkia. Again, playing it safe. You can't give up any more free turns to Zachary. Has to establish the second Palkia. And again, chooses to pass over, knowing that you can hold the water energy for a future turn to draw more from Radiant Greninja here. Yeah, and you've always got that V-Star power, which is going to get you attacking in one turn. It's it's not perfect. You'd like to be attacking without it. But at this stage of the game, you'll take it because it's definitely an option. But for Zachary here, we see another flip. Heads. It's a heads on Kramomatic. So now we're seeing... Well, just far more. Oh, we've got boss's orders straight away. So, you know, Zachary, that's the only thing he wanted there. So he's going to be able to get either the Radiant Greninja to take away potentially the draw engine or just go after an easy two prize Palkia while also knowing that that's going to limit Zad's attacking options in future turns. It is one of those Palkia. And this is just getting awkward for Xander. Yeah. See the commitment of a stadium, uh, which is always a little bit scary. It's going to be the old cemetery. Three additional cards, finally some fuel for an Ultra Ball. I think it's really important to establish your other VMAX, but it is in the prize cards, so you can't protect this Fusion Energy Mew. It would have been a great way to secure yourself some really high damage. Uh, that being said, it's still tricky for Xander to try and get a uh, gusting play on a Mew V, but it would have been a great way to maintain really high Melodious Echo pressure. Regardless, there's a KO established. Zachary going to be going down to three prize cards this turn, guaranteed. It's getting a few extra pieces along the way. It seems like he's content here. You can simply copy the Meloetta going down to just three remaining. And let's see how Xander can react to this. He promotes the Drizzile to kick things off. We know he's held on to Irida from that previous turn. Still has concealed cards at his disposal as well. Roxanne is picked up, and he does have Roxanne Path as a combo now if he wants to. Have to make some actions first. You need to use your own V-Star power before you do lock yourself out. So straight away we do see the V-Star power. Sure. There are two energy in the discard pile. Gonna go straight onto this V-Star. Yeah. It looks like it's cross switcher time onto the two Fusion Energy Mew. This oh. is huge. And, and the, the whole peak. combo and comes out. out. This is, yeah, this is huge. And this is what I meant about only playing two Mew V Max. It's great until one is prized, because Zachary could have got the Mew V Max last turn, and this would not have been an option for Xander. Roxanne Path would still have been an option, and a very good one, but not combined with a two prize KO. So Xander here, I mean, I think still on the back foot, but this is, this is literally everything you could have wanted. <laughs> Two prize KO, taking energy off the board, turning off those abilities, putting Zachary down to a low hand size, and essentially putting Zachary on a clock. You have got a couple turns to draw out of this, or else I am actually just gonna run through. Even picks up a turn attachment as well for his benched Palkia V, very helpful. We're gonna see the reset of a Driv uh, Drizzle here with Scoop Up Net, so he has options for the following turn and takes his first two prizes of the game. Will this comeback be enough? Is Path of the Peak going to stick here? Oh, that is always the question with Path of the Peak. Oh, actually, we've got an Ultra Ball in hand for Zachary, and I think he is literally... Time. Yeah, just going to go get the Pumpkaboo. <laughs> got to get the Pumpkaboo, knock the Path of... This is why I was so excited when the Pumpkaboo hit the discard last game, because Pokemon are easy to find. So, you know, getting a, a counter stadium is not that easy. Getting a Pokemon is easy in this format. So many ball search cards. And now Zachary has gone, well, I've got a low hand size. I've actually got no hand, but it's all right, because I can now draw potentially 18 cards <laughs> off Genesect. <laughs> you limit yourself just by one, because, of course, Pumpkaboo isn't a Fusion Strike oh, Pokemon. Touché. Oh, 15 cards. Sure. <laughs> uh, but you've got to take it. And we're going to see a Pokemon catcher coming down as well now. It's heads. That's fantastic for him. He can take another two prize knockout, put himself just one away. And again, this Mew is pr sitting pretty. You don't even have to spend any resources in terms of damage modifiers. You've already got the choice belt to help you get there. It's going to pick up one card, the double turbo energy. We saw a Melodious Echo last turn as well, so no need for switch shenanigans either. You can pretty much hold the lot. And uh, you've got to feel pretty good about that position. Yeah, and the thing is, Zachary's taking a lot of KOs here without using those power tablets, which you're going to need to KO the V-Star in a right. moment. So I like this. You've got a power tablet in hand. You've already got the choice belt attached. I, I think Zachary might be able to do this over the next couple of turns. And what a hand to sit on. He's got two tablets for next turn as well. And we know Xander plays one Roxanne and one Marnie, and that's it, and only one stadium critically. 
via okay. one copy of Path to the Peak, which has been bounced immediately. Yeah. Zachary going down to one prize, and I'm not sure if there's many defensive plays uh, Xander can make at this point. Uh, and let's not forget, we're talking about all of these damage modifiers to KO the Palkia V-Star. Could just gust a Manaphy. Yeah, that's all it takes. <laughs> he's got <laughs> coin flips on catchers, he's got Kramomatics, he's got the damage mods already in hand, so uh, Xander needs to hand disrupt, Shady that's dealing. certain. And we are going to see that one Shady Dealing that he bought himself last turn with the scoop up net. And will Xander be able to piece together something here? Three, four, five, six, he does play a Marnie, but the problem is when it's not combined with Path to the Peak, right. you're just going to draw out of it with Genesec. And we know that Zachary's hand is busted, but Xander <laughs> doesn't know that. Yeah, Xander has to commit to the boss's orders and just say, I just have to try and dodge and weave for a turn and just stick to my prize race. I know that there's a high potential that I get KO'd this turn. There's only one power tablet, I think, in the discard pile. It's very much in Zachary's reach. But if you just boss, take out one Genesect, uh, you at least have that going for you that you can win in two turns. Absolutely. The timer has gone to zero on our screen. Trying to confirm if that does mean the time has been called officially or not. That, but I don't okay. think it's really going to matter because it should be that either Zachary wins this turn or Xander wins the next turn. This is this game is not going to be going on for very long at all. Yeah, when the clock runs out, players don't just stop play. Uh, we have plus three turns. So whoever it ended on when the timer ran out, they are turn zero. Uh, and both players essentially have two turns from then. So there's turn zero, turn one for the other player turn two for the player who started on turn zero and then turn three will close out the game and that's plenty of turns for Zachary to close here yeah when he got a ball oh, we d yeah boss's orders at this point Xander yeah. may be assessing his options because you're going for the double turbo you're attacking this turn certainly um, the other option was to try and just trap the uh, Genesect like, it's, it's okay. Uh, looks like Xander was so drawing two power tablet the, there, yeah, and then we get go. the KO yeah, with the mute on the Palkia, and Zachary Fortier wins yeah, round no, one of day one of Worlds. First dream game we've had in three years, and that was a good <laughs> one, Joe. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. Uh, two top-level players playing two of the top contenders that we think are going to be at the World Championships, and really well played from both players. Uh, Zachary 